myself. I am Jim Gustafson, professor of psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin Medical School, giving my 36th lecture again, second version, called The Spirit of Place. Now, this will be my lecture on what I call double nonlinear geometry, uh, very much like that of Riemann's lecture in June 10th, 1854. Uh, which is called On Hypotheses at the Foundation of Geometry. Now, in concluding this lecture series of maps, essential maps, in my view, I'm prepared to show four dream maps that demonstrate the simplicity of orientation. By orientation, I mean where the animal needs to close for staying out of danger, and where the animal needs to open to nourish him or herself. The crucial word is where. Knowing where you are positioned in your own phase space of all your potential energies. If you're positioned wrongly, you will have disturbing signals like fear, defeat, nausea to alert you to your positioning. This is why I believe that psychiatry is of the greatest help when it's concerned with this orientation. It is the fundamental problem of biology, of religion, and of literature. Now, I will try to demonstrate exactly what I mean by the fundamental problem. By taking four dream maps, um, at 4 a.m. as signposts of what I must watch out for entering the day. The sieve, or net, out of the night sea, as Poincaré would say, looks at the field of the hippocampus for its map at 4 a.m. of opportunities and dangers, if we will only heed it. You will get to appraise therein my biology and religion and literature. First dream called Bouillabaisse Overcooked. I left this out of the lecture last week, even though it was in there. And then I thought it's the most important one. Ha, <laughs> okay. Don't ask me why I did that. A good Monday preceded this dream. One of my patients looked at my previous book, 24 Theorems, and said it was too difficult. She's not the first to have said such a thing. I got it down off the shelf and I read her theorem one and said to her, it's just plain English, I said. A constant operator is stale, and a transitional operator is fresh. She got that. However, I still get flushed at four, 5 o'clock every day, Paul. Call it the hot engine flush. Too much has happened in the day. I felt that, that this morning after a clinic of too many, too many events. But we are all too many events. But why? Why do I? Why every day? I still don't really accept the condition of our people. Like Akaki Akakovich in Gogol's The Overcoat, they comply to copy a lot of things. That's a, the way you earn a living. You know, every specialty, Pam, you're not the only one. <laughs> and they compensate themselves with buying an overcoat to worship. You, in 1950, it was a hat but now it's an overcoat. Now, Gogol was 20 years ahead of Marx, and he m much more concise and graphic, showing the peop how the people become stale and not fresh, with some kind of overcoat or a car or what have you to make up for the self-sacrifice. Now, Ed, we'll go to the whiteboard. The first dream is uh, dream maps, the shrimp soup heated up without lemon. I dreamt that about 5 in the morning. And underneath it, you see that fish saying no. Well, I'll not explain it. Um, and I dreamt that uh, Ruth and I were in, exp in an experiment in which orders were being given by someone like Stanley Milgram. You can Google Stanley Milgram. He gave orders to people to turn up the voltage to someone, to a subject in the other room at Yale, and and kept increasing. And the person would writhe and writhe and more, and they were told to give you know, to give even more voltage, and almost everyone just kept following orders. So that's a metaphor. Um, and heat up, in other words, with regard to shrimp soup, if, if that's us, 
that's you, Stuart. Shrimp soup. <laughs> and the orders are heat up and don't stop accelerating. I discussed these orders with my wife, Ruth, who's here today, and we agree that simmering the soup will be quite enough, and we eat it. All right, you can come back from the whiteboard. And, and by the way, the, we're, we are the fishes. We, we, we said no. All right, now when I wake up, I think of, do you see why I left this out? It's a rather alarming picture of ourselves. Uh, I think of D.H. Lawrence and what he wrote. He said, not everything is allowed, he said, and certainly not the destruction of beautiful orange soup, namely the beautiful complexity of ourselves. The dream is another signpost on which a map is given of the day I'm entering. It's going to be another day of patients putting themselves in compliance with orders given and turning up, someone turning up the voltage on them, not to mention the staff. Uh, that, by the way, um, that, was, uh, that was called the mega machine by Lewis Mumford. This, the pyramid was the first mega machine. And everyone, of course, was being given orders to build a tomb for one guy so one guy could be immortal. That was the mega machine. That's how, where we began. But anyway, we're all in compliance with the surface. And we all explode or go into flight like Akaki Akakaevich. Well, we are Akaki, you know. <laughs> Great word, Akaki. My friend Mike in, in Kentucky said, almost everyone in Kentucky is Akaki. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. He admitted it anyway. So now the second dream is called a gift. Now. I, I went up to my study after such a day as that, and I thought, I, I really need a gift of some sort. And I couldn't do any more. I finally went, as, as Jung would always say every night, I can't do any more consciously, so I'm going to have to um, see what my dream has to say. So the second dream, you see where it says L.L. Bean? You see those three fishing poles with flies on the end of them, and you see those trout you know, hooked, on the, hooked on there. And uh, you can come back from there. Um, so I got these in the mail. I got these three flies from L.L. Bean. The strange thing was I hadn't ordered them. L.L. Bean sent them to me as a gift. On the other hand, I had ordered a second one. So there were a pair of them. Um, and so they were, they were not totally from the outside, but they weren't totally from the inside. That's what a transitional operator is. So if you're not back from the whiteboard, I'd come back. So in the dream, all of this seemed quite matter of fact. But when I got up at 5.30 in the morning, I was knocked over by the immense beauty of this tiny set of flies who, stand, who can stand for the, my immense trio of the last three books of my map making. The center of this trio of books is this capacity of tiny details, tiny flies to be sensitive to the movements of the individual trout and the movements of the fishermen. Uh, this is a different kind of fishing in psychiatry and in biology and in religion and in literature. It, it alludes to Yeats's poem, The Fisherman, that I've tried to live up to all my life. Now, I'm getting better at it because I get a rudder or map every morning at 4 a.m. like I'm giving you another one. And I steer my rudder into the day, right? Uh, I am a Scandinavian navigator, and I'm an Irish fisherman. Many generations. I'm just the latest version of these two things from my father's side and my mother's side. My mother was Scotch-Irish, Pam. All Swedes on the other side, Paul. Dangerous as hell. So anyway. Um, the Scandinavian navigator and the Irish fisherman get the fundamental problem of biology, religion, and literature, as I see it in these three remarkable variations of the music, quite as Levi Strauss imagined that all of mythology was one big set of musical variations. All right, you're learning more than you want to know, but here comes the third version, Paul. You said there was a lot packed into this lecture. I'm afraid you're right, but we're going to come down to it what it's all about at the end. All right, third dream is called a symmetrical cold engine. So finally we come to the spirit of place, which is the subject of the lecture, as D.H. Lawrence called it. Uh, this was a dream I had on a Saturday afternoon two weeks ago in my nap. I never had a dream like this in my nap. I've never had such a beautiful architecture in an afternoon nap. 
I dreamed it, and strangely, um, I, I did not get to play tennis on this Saturday before the nap because they erased my name on the, as a, on the reservation, which is in pencil at Nielsen. And, and, my, and I and my three partners are standing there, and we just all burst out laughing. Uh, I said it never happened in 40 years, so how did this happen? And it reminded me of something very beautiful in, 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 in the American grain when, uh, when Cortez uh, murdered everything on his way to Tenochtitlan and standing in front of, of Cortez in this beautiful city he's about to give up and tells him that he's now a subject to the king of Spain. And Montezuma is a very noble guy, and he just said, I'm a subject of Spain. That's what he said outwardly. But of course, inwardly, he was totally enraged. But there was no point in saying anything to this guy. So now we'll go to the, the uh, whiteboard, and you'll see the third dream on the right upper right corner. Um, because something astounding happened after after I had after this event, I took a nap. I went home after having been defeated <laughs> from play, <laughs> and um, and I and I think that my our refusal to rage on the outside, but really on the inside, we refused to comply with with being treated like that. And this put me into the spirit of place. And now in this dream. I was in this beautiful oval that you see there, and it had extraordinary powers. I w one, it was one. It had mirrors on, on all around the oval, so that it was like I was like being in a ballet practice room. So I was gathering great energy visually from the mirrors, but then orally because the acoustics of the place were like a beautiful, like the Berlin Philharmonie. And kinesthetically, like I was bouncing off the boards like a hockey player. So I was in three senses. I probably could taste and smell the place as well. And I, I can now. Montezuma is in us in spirit, even if Cortez put him into the ground. This is Montezuma. This is Montezuma's revenge. He is in us if we make room for him, as I did in this dream of the Great Oval. Okay, come back from the whiteboard, Ed, if you haven't already. This great and symmetrical, Stuart and I talk about this all the time, cold engine has become possible and natural. Once I refused to go along with Cortez, taking over, and yet I refuse him to, to show him any sign that, that's ha that that has happened. Everything beautiful I've ever carried out has precisely this structure. This is how five of us at MIT played basketball against Harvard over 50 years ago and took them into double overtime when I had a broken left ankle. <laughs> no stopping us. This is how I learned to conduct groups by steering between the opposing currents 30 years ago. This is the spirit of place that emerges on every such occasion in which, like the one in which we now sit. All right, we're coming to the conclusion. Fourth dream. And Pam, this, this is, I call this one, I will lift mine eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help, Psalms 121. My distress was not over in composing what I just told you about the beautiful oval. I thought, this is such a glorious way to feel, gathering all the energy in all the sensory modalities, right? That is so beautiful. In fact, Stuart and I don't like to give it up, do we? <laughs> Once we've got it, but you have to. So as there was something wrong with this, and I, 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 I thought I was in t tremendous pain. Ruth and I listened to uh, Schubert's impromptu in E-flat major and, and with the Berlin Philharmonic. And Schubert composed beauties like, like that great oval and uh, died unknown in his early 30s. And as I said to Ruth, uh, my entire life of composing has gone like that of Schubert, except I've lived twice as long as Schubert. Too bad for me, huh? So my consolation I was I would go, get to go to bed and I would have a beautiful dream that would get me out of it. I would lift mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, and I did. And it came, as always, as it always comes. All right, so now we get the fourth dream, uh, which is at the bottom left there. Um, 
Um, here we go. So you see the left, you see the bare outline of the city there. Uh, this was a city that was somebody that uh, everyone in the city was being subjected to vol someone increasing the voltage on them <laughs> continuously. And what the effect was that everyone in the city was turning into, a, would join a gang of some Mexican drug lord. And so every, every block in the city was, was more, getting more and more treacherous. <laughs> now this is a reduction to absurdity. But I certainly have no faith in our cities whatsoever. As, as Ruth commented, obviously you don't. New York City will soon be underwater anyway, she said to me. <laughs> so, you know, so much for cities, Stuart. In the middle you see a, a, a strange thing there. You see that, uh, you can see a kind of derrick with a box there, with that black box there. So this actually has to do with the American Revolution. And, and, um, but anyway, it, it refers to what's going on at University Hospital all the time. It was a gigantic cereal box, three stories high. And it had all the gear that, that, that the hospital would need you know, for the next revolution in gastroenterology or whatever, right? <laughs> and, but the, the funny thing that happened is when uh, Derek lifted this three-story cereal box over the hospital, the, the, it fell apart at the seams and crashed on the ground. <laughs> this is another a reduction to absurdity. I don't have any faith in the revolutions of more equipment, you see. Although I appreciate Paul, my, my Mac Pro. And I appreciate Brian too, helping me figure it out. So I'm not against it, I just don't, I think it should be a, ser a servant of purpose, not what we, not our, not our religion to him. So finally you see, and then the third dream, there's that oval again on the right there, past the box and and that that's the beautiful globe theater um, and you know like every time the Berlin Philharmonic plays or I conduct a group in its music like this um, I can bring this forth the Shakespeare himself himself said this theater lasts a few hours like a dream and not leaves not a rack behind so another reduction to absurdity you can't take refuge in a theater the stream you see is about three kinds of faith that won't hold up. Misplaced faith, that's what we're talking about. Because it'll be, you know, the, this theater too will be over in a few minutes. And what will comfort me then, right? Well, I'll tell you. That's, so, uh, so I went up to my study and I sat in my chair overlooking our, our, these beautiful tall trees and I thought, I've already found what I, I've, I've, I've gotten a dream about three things I don't have faith in, and then I have, I'm having a dream. I'm having the fourth thing, which is I'm sitting in my chair looking at these beautiful trees, which is our core habitat that we came from 90,000 years ago. I'm sitting right, right I'm already saved. And I, and I have this extraordinary instrument, which is three reductions to absurdity about what I'm not going to have faith in, and then and then a beautiful sense of what I do have faith in. I am in the bosom of my family, and I am vindicated once again in my faith, my lifeline as a map maker, that my maps are, are incredibly accurate. And I get, so I have a map for false deliverance in three versions and the, and the absurdity, and I have a map of true deliverance as in the refuge of our core habitat in East Africa as I have gotten time and again since I was eight years old and got my Bible. All right, here, now we get the end. That was going to be the end of the lecture, but now you're going to have to listen to the, the, last, the last and fifth, the last and fifth, and maybe most important dream. So perhaps now that I'm stopping, you'll want to know where I'm going. Last week, I was faculty backup for Dana and Brittany when they seemed to be admitting patients all night. By midnight, I was sick of the pace of it. We're back to the buya base being heated up without limit, right? We're back to the voltage being turned on higher and higher. So I stayed awake for two hours in helpless rage <laughs> after having admitted six or seven of them. Uh, and everything I've said in these lectures seemed totally pointless to me. Because in this kind of rush, Everything becomes the same, this surface, as we talked about Paul. 
So I, I slept somehow from 2 to 6 a.m. And then Dana woke me up. And she said, I have two more admissions at 6 in the morning. And I said, oh, no. Oh, right. Um, but I'd had a very funny dream between 2 and 6 in the morning, uh, at which site's where I'm going next. And now we can go to the whiteboard, and we're about to finish up. You see that diagram on the right there? There's a something that looks like a red dinosaur and, and then a green dinosaur. Do you see those? And they're crossing horns. Or, or whatever, and, and this is this is what that dream, uh, the text of that dream. I was running for election for a post in East Africa. Only it was not me, but I had a, a group of followers in a kind of water wheel, that green counterclockwise water wheel you see there, and opposed to us was a group pushing clockwise at tremendous pace, a wheel of fire. Okay, Ed, you can come back, and this is the end of the lecture. Ah, I thought. We are 90,000 years later, after the great breakout of human evolution, from one frontier to another. Here's the next frontier, Paul. Some of us are going to go real slow, like in Santiago, perhaps, counterclockwise into beautiful discoveries at 4 in the morning. And some of us are going to go real fast, clockwise, maybe even this afternoon, if we're not careful, Ruth, into what Dana said to me two nights ago, way past nausea. So you may not get to choose, Stuart, what you vote for in second year on call, what, what the night serves up for you in the way of shrimp soup, <laughs> including yourself. But you do get to vote where you position, where you place yourself in the long run of the next 40 years. Thank you.